the voice of Jesus. Jesus is our life-giving spirit. It says that in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 45. And he relates to us in ways of spirit. So by his Holy Spirit, he communicates to our spirit. The Holy Spirit abides within us. He lives in our hearts. And when we spend time communing with God, something in the spirit realm shifts first within our heart and secondly then within the spirit realm around us in our immediate vicinity. As we choose to rend our hearts towards God, the presence of the kingdom of God increases around us. And this is kind of like what people describe when they say that they sense the presence of God is electric in the room or they sense the presence of God is really thick or really present. They're sensing that shift in the spiritual realm where the presence of God has become, it's more tangible, you can sense it more. And it's because the heart of the person has become more aware and more in tune with the Spirit of God, so the heart of the person recognizes and discerns the presence of God outside of them with greater ease. It's like having a dimmer switch, and as you turn the dimmer switch on and bright turn the brightness up, you can see light more easily, but if you turn the dimmer switch down, you see less. and. It's kind of like the dimmer switch is metaphorical of our heart and the eyes of our heart. So as we open the eyes of our hearts and ask Holy Spirit to enlighten them to his presence and his ways, so we begin to see that light, the light of God around us with greater ease. According to ancient biblical understanding, communing with God is like inviting a friend around for dinner. While in each other's personal space, friends get to know each other through relationship, through spending time doing a common thing together where you are forced to sit in each other's presence. You're forced to get to know each other, but you also choose it. And Jesus described this kind of imagery in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 20. He described that God wants to eat with us, that he wants to come in and dine with us. So he wants to relate to us in a similar way to the biblical understanding of how two people get to know each other. It's, it's through that fellowship, it's through choosing to just be with each other, choosing to sit with each other and, and just to hang out and just to be friends. In other words, God wants to get into our personal space. He wants to get into your personal space. He longs for us to know him inside and out. And it goes deeper still. In John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 23, Jesus says that him and the Father, uh, Father God, will make a home in us. So in our very bodies, in our hearts, within the spiritual space within us, God wants to make his home. He wants to make a permanent abode where he will live and dwell with us forever. So this communion with God is a constant thing. It's not something that we work up or that we can um, invoke somehow. It's something that as soon as we say, yes, I believe in Jesus, God comes in, he lives within us. And our part in that communion with God is just that dimmer switch imagery of turning the dial up and choosing to tune into his presence, which is constantly inside us. So... Our Father in Heaven, along with Jesus, through his Holy Spirit, has made a permanent abode within us, within our personal space. So when we commune with God, we focus and tune our spirits into Jesus, the Spirit of Jesus, who is dwelling within us. We can commune with God in various ways, such as prayer, meditation, worship, contemplative methods, or other ways. Each method is akin to inviting Jesus around for that dinner and sitting down with him and choosing to be in his presence for a one-on-one -on -one meal where you're getting to know each other. And so he is eager to do that with us. Remember the invitation, Revelation chapter 3, verse 20.